Welcome to the Rewire Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Stuman, and I'm here to rewire your mind for success. We're glad that you're here. So I'm at this uh, gas station the other day, and I'm with my son, Colton, who is six years old. And Colton and I, we go into the gas station. I put, I put the gas nozzle in the, the car, let it pump, and I walk into the station. And I'm, I'm grabbing some snacks. You know, I think I grab a bag of chips for myself in the Slim Jim. That's usually my go-to thing, right? If I ain't got shit to do for the day and I'm going to cheat on my diet a little bit, I'm going to get a sack of Funyuns in the Slim Jim. That's like... That's like cocaine to me. You know, I just, I like that side. I'd be just <laughs> crumbs all over the place. I'd be sniffing the Funyuns out of the bottom of the bag and take it up, and rock it up with my fucking. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, got a little over the top there. Sorry. But anyways, trying to grab some snacks and Colton, you know, he's grabbing some, some snacks too, but his snacks are a little different. He likes Sour Patch Kids and stuff like that. So we're, we're, we're collaborating our snack collection together there at the counter and a, a gentleman walks up behind us and he's got a six pack of beer and a bag of chips and in one hand. And then the other hand is missing. He's got about a half an arm and it's locked off a little bit underneath the elbow. And he, and he takes that arm and he's got it wrapped around uh, like a gallon of milk or something like that. And Colton looks at me in the line and he says, dad, that guy right there, you see him? And he wasn't quiet about it at all. And the guy's like a foot behind me. He's like, he ain't got an arm. He's missing a whole arm, dad, look. And the guy looks at my kid. And this is that moment as a parent. It's like, oh, shit. How's this going to go, you know? But that guy looked at my kid. And he said, buckle up, buddy. You know, I didn't wear my seatbelt. And I flew through the windshield of a car and I lost my arm. If there's one thing I can tell you, if you want to keep your arms, don't do what I did. Make sure you always wear your seatbelt. I wish I'd have worn mine. And I thought, man, some of the most positive outlook. It's like God took that man's arm so that he could teach lessons to others so that he could be a messenger of what not to do. He may think the world did this for evil. Oh, my arm's missing because I didn't buckle up. And that may be in his mind, but what he don't realize is he inspired my kid to always wear a seatbelt. How many times has he told that story where people's kids now all wear seatbelts? See, a lot of times we think that, that, The world has put these hardships on us. The world has put us in these obsolete places because it doesn't like us when reality, it's trying to get us to turn our mess into a message. You see, here's a random guy on a Monday at a gas station grabbing some chips with his wife. And and then my kids just happens to be standing there. First of all, there's like a one in a trillion chance that any of us are on this planet alive. And the second of all, there's like a one in 10 trillion chance that we'd all be in the same place at the same time, having this conversation. When, as soon as I got back in the car outside, Colton put his seatbelt on Dad, I like my arms. And, you know, I looked at the guy and I said, man, you never know what's kids. And he said, I got six of them, buddy. And I tell them to buckle up too. In my life, some people that have gone through hardships, people that have lost a leg in the military or people that have lost an arm through a windshield, people that have, that have gone through horrific things in their life are oftentimes some of the most positive, happy to be alive people. Because you don't realize how precious life is until it's almost gone. You don't realize how important it is that you have a positive outlook until everything's negative all of a sudden. And you know, a lot of times, Maybe some of you are listening and you may be missing a limb or you may be missing this, that, or the other. You may have this handicap and you think it's the world stressing you out and the world putting the force of average against you. But really what it is, is it's your way to teach a message so the next person can learn from your experience. If you're quiet about your accident, if you're not sharing what happened, then you're not getting the message out to let other people, to keep them, prevent them from having to go through your suffrage is a prevention of suffrage upon maybe thousands, hundreds, or maybe millions of people, but you can't be silent about it. You got to teach that lesson that you learn. You know, I was once ejected from an ATV, broke my neck in two places. Wasn't wearing a seatbelt, much like that guy. There wasn't a windshield, right? I went right through it. You know, it was an ATV, so there wasn't a windshield, so side by side. But I used that message during that time. It's like, hey, I'm only walking because I go to the gym. If I had not gone to the gym and not worked out, I would not be walking. 
And so I could have been like, oh, man, I broke my neck, blah, blah, blah. But instead, I stressed the importance of going to the gym because it literally saved my fucking legs. So whatever mess you're going through, it's bigger than you. Use it to help others rise above.